everybody, and welcome back to PGA Coaching Live from Kiowa Island, presented by Cadillac. We're talking about all things golf for the everyday golfer. We've got exclusive interviews, insights, and coaching demonstrations from the world's best coaches, the true heroes behind the major champions, to get you excited about developing your own game. Whether you're completely new to the game or maybe you're a seasoned veteran of the sport, we've got the insights to help take you a step further on your golfing journey, so stay tuned. And with that, we welcome you into our PGA Coaching Live set right here on the ocean course at Kiowa Island Golf Resort. And just steps away from the Atlantic Ocean. What a beautiful, beautiful setting. It's outrageous. It's a great day for windsurfing, i got to tell you that. And the tip, <laughs> sure the tip in a moment is going to dial in with just that. Yeah, and speaking of, we had a storm roll through earlier at about 11 a.m., lasted about 20 minutes. It's cleared up now, but the wind has picked up. It's two o'clock. This happened yesterday as well. So let's talk about the wind a little and how it's going to affect things tomorrow. Is it early tea time? Maybe an advantage? Uh, it's certainly an early <laughs> advantage. Uh, there's no question about that. We were watching Rory McIlroy on our feed in between our set time here, and he was creating something uh, 185 miles an hour ball speed. The ball was only wow. carrying with his driver 265. That ball should carry well over 300 yards with that type of ball speed, so that gives you an indication of the wind. Uh, but turning around, going downwind, you're going to be yeah. able to launch. They're gonna, we're going to see, I bet you're going to see a 400-yard drive this week. Wow, and in terms of shots you'll see in the wind, of course, we know all about the stinger made famous by Tiger Woods. I know you've had a few nightmares about Tiger <laughs> in your day, Steve. Okay. <laughs> Show us the stinger. <laughs> all right, the stinger. The stinger. Well, what is the stinger? First of all, the stinger is that shot that flies really low. So at this Pete Dye layout, the golf course is really routed. We have the first four holes that are going to basically play into the wind for most of the week. And then the last five holes are going to play dead into the wind. Everything in between is going to be sandwiched, is going to be downwind. So, but these into the wind holes, this is the key. So the stinger is a great shot, especially on a shot on a day where you have a 20 mile an hour wind. And it's all about, you know, we talked a little bit before about shaft lean with Brian Kroll this morning, but it's all about the left wrist. Lead wrist is so important. We want to make sure we get the wrist like this. If the left wrist starts to get cupped, that is a bad thing. So we really, if we want to strengthen any part of our body really strongly, it's the left wrist and left forearm because we really want to make sure that that thing stays down. Another tip would be to make sure you're almost going to feel like you turn the club face down this way on the downswing. So let's take a look and what, see what that looks like. And this trajectory, I'm going to pick out these clouds out here. I'm going to try to keep it below that line of the clouds. I might stand a little closer to the ball, maybe choke up on it just a touch. That's really I don't have to funny. put it back in my stance a ton. But what I want to make sure is I get that left hand and lead it down. Ooh, that's a wow. wind cheater right there. Nice and low. Actually, it reminds me the trajectory. The trajectory reminds me a lot of like a hockey slap shot. A hockey, Just well, you, low it you should know your. I, I do love your your boyfriend in the hockey arena. He uh, he knows how to hit that shot. But for sure. back to golf. So whether you want to break a hundred for the first time, or maybe you want to win the Wanamaker Trophy like Justin Thomas did in 2017, we've got you covered.
While Steve and I hold it down here on set, let's send it out to our roving range team, Scott Walker and Rich Jones. But before we do, let's learn a little bit more about Rich. A 17-year member of the Metropolitan PGA section, Rich Jones has an extensive track record of success in developing and managing player development programs throughout Long Island. His coaching ability and the, uh, really revolves around um, not only the expertise that he has with equipment and with changing technologies, but he also is really able to connect with the golfer in a way that just establishes a quick rapport with them, makes them feel comfortable, and helps them retain the information. Known as a tremendous recruiter of newcomers to golf, Jones is committed to not only introduce, but keep golfers engaged in the game. I was ready to give up. You know, you lose your strength, you lose this, hospital stay here or there. Each time I come back, he just brings me right back up. Rich brings me right back up as far as he can. I now know I will not ever give up on golf. Rich's junior programs have enabled approximately 3,000 junior golfers access to the game. Rich is so passionate about the game. You see it in everything he does. He doesn't just express it in words. Rich expresses it in like emotion and in action. So you've seen a little left to right or right yes. to left? Oh, no, great. That's left. That's left? Okay, good. For his tireless efforts in growing the game, in 2020, Rich was honored with the National PGA Player Development Award. You think about Rich, he's somebody that you would want to represent um, your organization. So whether that's Dick Sporting Goods and Golf Galaxy, the, the PGA, um, he's somebody that you want to be the face of, of that organization. He leads the PGA of America. He really has dedicated the majority of his life to this. We'll go to Will. We can talk. Mm -hmm. Okay. It'll we'll just lead into it. And we're here with uh, Rich Jones, of course, and of course I am Scott Walker. It's, we're here on the course, uh, on the driving range, and it's interesting as things are fluid here. We're looking at Henrik Stenson right now, a past major champion. Uh, for you, as, as players are trying to get ready here on this final day, what is the key to having good prep before the final day? Again, uh, you know, Scott, I mean, in terms of what what brought them here, they're going to kind of stay with it, right? There's not uh, a lot of changes, right? I had an opportunity to kind of go over there and watch and, um, you know, talk to the coaches uh, for a little bit. But really, you know, staying in the moment, really maybe just working on one uh, or two things uh, for the most part. You know, went out in the morning, uh, played a practice round, and maybe one thing that they maybe want to, you know, maybe work on, maybe flighting the golf ball, uh, bringing that um, you know, spin rate a little bit lower. Well, let's talk a little bit about Henrik Stenson as we uh, look a little bit closer into his swing. And he's an interesting case because a world-class player then lost his swing, particularly with the driver, and then found a way back. How do you approach someone who has had that kind of struggle and, and repaired it? So, you know, I, I equate it to, it's like a relationship, right? You've got to trust it, right? And, uh, and certainly if you don't have that trust in that driver, um, you're certainly not going to uh, put it in place so I think it's got to be trust and I think he's found a uh, trust in maybe not just the driver but maybe it's trusty three wood and I think he really stays with that and you've got to really um, you know admire him for that because he stays with it all the way through and been very successful with it well it's interesting because that's something that is maybe not typical the way people think they think well if I'm having a problem with a certain club I should try to hit it until I get it right um, but he's a perfect example that one club one club all the time that three wood um, has really led him to to this place yeah and you know relatable to our, um, our 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 players our players out there that are that are watching this um, you know don't take something out there that you haven't really um, have fully trust in right so if you don't trust your driver and it's not working for you and you haven't had a chance to go practice it you know don't transfer it and bring it to the golf course uh, I recently had an opportunity to be at uh, the PGA uh, Works uh, Championship at uh, TPC Sawgrass and um, one of our players one of the players there from the Howard University was struggling with his driver uh, but he had success with his three wood right so he ended up playing with the three wood and had a much better result so trust 
what works for you, especially in tournament mode. If you don't trust it, go to the range and practice it uh, before you transfer it to the One golf last course. question. He's looking here at uh, his wedges. Uh, how do you manage your wedges in wind that's really strengthening right now? Yeah, so, you know, clearly you've got to learn how to hit the wedges different distances, right? So you want to hit it long, short, you want to hit it high and low. And it's just a matter, if you will look at what he's doing, he's playing it, you know, off his back of back, back the stance, right? So to be able to fly it a little bit lower. And obviously when it's going down the wind, he might move that, um, you know, you know, ball position a little bit more forward to kind of get a, a much higher ball flight. So you just got to experiment with uh, what really works based on your environment and the conditions of the wind. All right, Rich, well, thank you. And uh, as Henrik Stenson continues his work, we will go out to the closing hole, the 18th and Joanna Co. We are live here on the 18th tee box in the Ocean Course at Kiowa. This is a brutal par four, 505 yards from the back tee. Looks like the PGA of America has an alternate tee about 25 yards up. Will be interesting to see if they utilize that tee depending on the wind conditions. Uh, I saw a video yesterday of Max Homa hitting driver three wood for his second shot. So that is a brutal closing stretch here. So from the tee, as we can see here, we have fescue on the right. We have three fairway bunkers. It's a beautiful setting here on the 18th hole. Um, we have hospitality tents in the background. So I'd say as a player, you're picking one particular hospitality tent as your target and then figuring out the wind conditions from there. So if it is left to right, probably a couple tents over. And if it's right to left, you're probably gonna have that ball come in from right to left. So um, tough, tough tee shot here. We can see a couple players coming in for their practice round, uh, their practice uh, tee shot here. So we'll see how they play it. But I'd say a, a tee shot down the left side sets up for a nice approach coming in for a, a tough second shot. My dad caddied for me at this year's PGA Professional Championship. It was really cool. You know, we've played golf together ever since I was born, since I was old enough to hold clubs. He helped me read putts really well. Um, we read them together and we agreed most of the time. Well, on the rider course the first day, he saw one thing and I saw another and he was 100% right and I should have listened to him because I missed it and it wasn't even close. My dad was great for me at the PGA Professional Championship, and he's going to be on the bag at Kiowa for me. You know, I'm not expecting to go shoot 66-66, but it'd be pretty nice, but anything could happen. If I go have a great week, that'd be awesome. I'm Larkin Gross, and I'm a member of the PGA Team of 20. And we have Larkin Gross right here on set, PGA Coaching Live. Welcome, and his coach, Erica Larkin, all the Larkins all the way around. <laughs> Team Larkin. Uh, Larkin. Director of Instruction at Creighton Farms, uh, representing the Middle Atlantic PGA section. Welcome you two. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. So you had some really cool practice rounds you were just telling me. Do tell everybody else. Um, yeah, I got to play with uh, first day Ricky, Henrik, oh, I'm sorry, Ricky, Kisner, and Hudson Swafford. Um, and then the back nine was joined by Joaquin and Brandon Stone, which is a lot of fun. Wow. Yesterday, uh, Lonto Griffin and I went out. He's a Virginia boy. Um, we got hooked up through the VSGA, which was a lot of fun. He's a great guy and gave me a lot of cool tips. Um, and then today I played with Kisner, Brian Harmon, and Henrik Stenson, which was a lot of fun too. Real, that's, that's phenomenal. You've got a, a super early tee time. We'll talk about it in a moment. But the, uh, I really wanted to, to talk about the Methodist University PGM program that you went through and really touting those. I mean, the, probably the largest PGA PGM program in the country. How did that prepare you for what you're doing today? Yeah, I mean, you know, I always tell people going to a school that big as far as golf and having all those good players to play against, especially I played on a team all four years, you know, it prepared me to kind of see the level of competition I see in the MAPGA, which we're a great playing section. And then just when you get on the national level, playing the PNC and um, playing the Winter Series and all that stuff, you know, I got a good chance to cut my teeth against a bunch of other good players and was prepared for the business as soon as I stepped out. And Erica, explain the relationship here, how you both got together and you ultimately coaching this guy here at Tukiwa. Oh, fantastic story. Uh, maybe a little serendipitous that our names are the same, uh, but, uh, Larkin's wonderful girlfriend Paige was actually our PGM intern at Creighton Farms and introduced us and we had a coaching relationship starting about a year ago so it just worked out. He had an amazing year last year and continuing on. 
Steve mentioned a little bit about your time at Methodist Larkin. You guys won the NCAA uh, team championship in 23 or 2018 for Division Three. How do you feel that sort of prepared you in terms of maybe how your nerves are ahead of tomorrow? Yeah, and you know, it's been good to put myself in big situations like that, especially I played in four national championships and we won one of them. So, you know, being able to have that experience of playing in a big time event, um, actually the first tee of that championship, I chunked it about 180 oh, no. yards off to the right and saved par and, you know, that wow. calmed my nerves down. And I had kind of a similar experience at the PNC and, you know, but that's, you know, that builds momentum and it gives me a good chance to pull on those experiences if I ever get in a situation, you know, in the bigger events. So. Yeah. Erica, as his coach, what stands out about his game that maybe our amateurs at home can, can take away from? Uh, he's so confident and poised, and I think that that just goes a long way with how he handles himself in pressure situations. Uh, he really is comfortable over the golf ball. He has a free swing. He swings just without tension and with just total commitment to every shot. And I think that that goes a long way for somebody that's as young as him, uh, building on experience. But it's it's like he's been here for years. And from what I could see, it looks like you were the only female coach out on the draw on the players' practice range. What kind of pride do you take in that, just being the only woman out there as a coach? Uh, I'm so happy to be here and represent the PGA, yeah. male or female, you know, and uh, it's great though to have a fresh perspective and it's been a dream come true for me to be inside the ropes and take this journey with him and hopefully take this journey on my career too now. Yeah, so it's been great, thank you. Well, we referenced earlier having an early tea time is gonna be really important with all of this wind that likes to kick up. Uh, your father, Butch, is gonna be on the bag with you 7-11 tomorrow morning on the first tee. Do you think he's gonna shed a bit of a tear out there maybe? I don't know, you know, um, he's pretty, you know, he and I have similar ideals as far as how we carry ourselves. So we're both gonna try and stay pretty poised and trying to let emotions get the best of us, but he might, um, you know, cause it's a, it's a big moment, it really is. And it's cool to get to do it, especially with him. And, you know, to have all my other, the support, you know, player support this week with everybody else that's here, especially having my girlfriend Paige here and my parents here, it's it's awesome. To put this in perspective, you mentioned off camera that this is your very first time ever even coming to a major championship, let alone playing in it. Yeah. I mean, the, the the emotions that you have to feel as well. Yeah, and, and it's a big stage. And, you know, when I teed off with uh, those guys yesterday, Ricky and Kisner and um, Hudson Swafford, you know, I hit it way left off the first tee just because, you know, it's a different it's a different feel. It's, you know, a lot more pressure, a lot more people around. You settled right down. I did. Yeah, <laughs> I did. You know, and that's good. And like I said, you know, like we were talking about having that to pull on playing in that kind of a group, you know, is going to help a lot this week. And being one of the youngest in the field, 23 years of age, you were the youngest in the PPC a few weeks ago as well. I mean, Erica, just speak to the fact of how proud you are of this guy right here and, and the things maybe you've taught him uh, over the course of, of time that are leading here tomorrow and gonna in the, in the round tomorrow. Uh, I'm so proud of, of how he's played the last year. I know his whole family and coaching staff from Methodist feel the same way. We're thrilled to be here with him. As far as what we've been working on, uh, little t tiny things, you know, it's, it's as much about what not to fix as what to, to talk about and just being really balanced through impact for him, um, really making sure that He's using his lower body the right way. He's a tall guy and uh, he's got a lot of wingspan. And so just making sure we have good stable positions through impact, really. How many of your members back at Springfield Golf and Country Club in Virginia are going to be watching? And how many are out here today and, and watching you this week? Yeah, the support's been amazing. You know, they'll all be watching. I'm sure they'll be in the bar watching on the big screen. And uh, Buddy Patch, who actually is a member of the the sporting club here and you know at Kasik and the River Club. He was out here yesterday and saw me at the practice round. So that support's great, you know, and we'll have a bunch of my buddies that I went to school with out here because a lot of them are PGA now. So yeah. it's cool to see everybody. It's well, really we'll awesome. be watching too. We certainly wish you both the best of luck. Yes. Larkin Gross and Erica Larkin, thank, thank you, you so much for coming on. And now let's check in with Colin Morikawa and his coach Rick Sessinghouse. So every day we got to get our body to feel the same. Right. Every day you sleep differently, you wake up differently, and you never really know how your body is. So I've always got this red band. I'll kind of just set up like I'm hitting a golf shot and just see how much rotation I can get. We don't want to cheat and just lift the arms. There has to be a, a rotation that's occurring. You'll always see me do some leg kicks. So I'll, I'll start going forward, and then I'll start going side. And that just kind of gets the body started. You just want to be ready by the first hold, not by the 15th. Tell us a little bit about how you go through your bag before a round. 
and just go 60, 55. I think starting with wedges is also super important for tempo. Just to slowly get the body warmed up. I mean, I right. never really start with full golf swings. You kind of have to ease your way into it. I always go my eight iron, eight iron's my favorite club, five iron. I think a lot of it is getting your mind warmed up, rehearsing a shot that you're most likely gonna have on the golf course. Actually visualizing like that's an actual pin mm -hmm. is kind of huge for the warm up. Five wood, three wood driver. Go back with a few chip shots. I'll always end on six balls. It's just the way I do it. <laughs> well, I think we're ready, let's go. Awesome. All right. The adrenaline's still rushing through my veins. Uh, I thrive on playing in front of people. I love bringing the crowd into it. I like giving out golf balls and signing autographs and just connecting with the people out there. It's what I do every day, and my job it comes natural. And the team here at Glen Arbor, they're wishing me congratulations, and it just is a great feeling. Being able to say that I know somebody that went out there and competed with the best golfers in the world, and that's a great achievement. He's put so much time and effort and energy into his game. But he's also, you know, here at Glen Arbor, and he's working constantly with not just lessons, but with the whole golf course. Yes. To me, when he tells me something, I really trust what he says because he can play at that type of level. He's giving lessons, he's running a club, managing a facility, and then he goes out there and he can make the cut and be a club pro, I think is an amazing accomplishment. I wake up in the morning and I don't feel like I'm going to work ever. I've got the best of both worlds. I can play, I can teach. I love seeing this golf course prosper into one of the best courses in the country. There's not one aspect of the game or the business that I don't enjoy. I am still on a journey and I'm excited to see where it's gonna take me. Wherever your golf journey is headed, let's get you there. Hey Colin, I know we're always talking about the mental game, right? To win the majors, you've got to inspire that inner drive. We need to be confident and we need to be committed. Sometimes you win just by staying in the zone. So much about golf is about your mental game. You know, how do you inspire yourself to really dig deep and hit a good shot? For me, it's all about visualization. Being comfortable when you're a little more focused on one target, instead of distracted, you're able to kind of freely hit the shots. You know, you want to feel confident with what you can do. One example of this paying off was the 16th hole of the PGA Championship. I was able to pull driver, feel comfortable about it, kind of go from there. I'll see my shot, line it up, see how we go. There's so much stress as a professional golfer. I'd say the calming environment of being inside an Escalade just allows me to relax. I practice music all the time. Music kind of helps decompress, de-stress, and put myself away from everything. It's really clear having 36 speakers around you. You can hear it in the front, you can hear it in the back, and it's really like sitting at a concert, which is really exciting driving a car. Okay, so you're gonna have a windy start. Oh. At PGA Coaching Live, Scott Walker and Rich Jones. We've had the pleasure of watching one of the great ball strikers in the world, Tommy Fleetwood, really try to hit short shots up against this win. What's the best way for a player to do that? Scott, I think this is fitting, right? Uh, we talked about uh, control in the flight of the golf ball yesterday in our tips. And, um, you know, clearly, I mean, the wind is blowing pretty hard here, right? So using that one particular club, whether it be a seven iron or eight iron distance and trying to control different flight, right? So, you know, here, if you take a look at Tommy Fleetwood, what he's doing is really choking down maybe an inch on the club, playing that ball in the back of a stance. And it's really 
holding it off and you see that ball flight is a little bit lower so that's really critical and for our players at home you really need to work on that really kind of take that one club and learn to flight at different distances uh, choking down playing it towards the back of your stance or maybe forward center just a little bit to really play with that trajectory well, let's look a little bit deeper now in detail at Tommy Fleetwood swing. And as we step away and give you a real good look at this, he's actually had a training aid that's right next to him that he's been using. Uh, tell me about how pros use training aids and how we as amateurs uh, should mimic that. Yeah, and it's uh, it's important, right? When you see the pros, the pros are using training aids. Uh, so, you know, there's definitely a reason why you should use them uh, but use them that's going to help your uh, your swing whether it be maybe one flaw or swing flaw that you're working on so in this case um, you know Tommy's working on maybe one particular thing maybe staying on the inside um, and you want to be able to focus on that one um, you know flaw or uh, you know position where you want to have to be more more consistency so you know definitely when you take a look at him now he's certainly just um, you know trying to dial in on that one particular I don't know if it's such a flaw but maybe just one swing thought that he wants to repeat a repeatable swing right right and what do you like about this move for him yeah so it's very quiet right he's very quiet with his lower body he kind of takes it back almost like a three-quarter swing um, truncated and really just keeping that that left arm you know not really flippy but really holding off uh, that club and keeping that loft exactly where it needs to be so short and punchy i like that i mean that golf ball is going to just stay right under the wind all right well if tommy fleetwood continues to get his last work in as he is one of the players that will begin his work tomorrow at the 103rd pga championship i come from a pga of america family uh, both my mom and father are pga members I've gotten a lot of stories over the years of like once I was like two and a half, three years old, four or five, being brought to the club and I was just kind of let run around, do whatever I needed to do as long as I wasn't hitting anyone or disturbing the first tee, it was all fine. Knowing that, you know, both my parents are PJ of America members, it's incredible to be able to have this experience now and to have a full family of PJ members kind of acknowledged for that is going to be awesome. I am Peter Bow and I'm a member of the PGA Team of 20. And we've got our Team of 20 member here, right here on our PGA Coaching Live set. Peter Ballow, welcome. Mike Ballow, your brother and caddy this week, and your PGA mentor over there, your head professional at Silvermine in Norwalk, uh, founder of the Mets section. Uh, welcome, everybody. We've got a full house here. Thank you, thank you. Great to be here. So give us a sense of how this golf course is playing for you and just the, the process of getting here and qualifying for this championship. Uh, this golf course is remarkable. Um, it is playing every bit of the 7,800 uh, yards that it says, uh, windy. Um, and it's kind of, kind of cool, you, you know, you kind of head out off one, play into the wind, uh, what we've done in the last two, and then you play about th 12 or 13 all downwind, which is a, kind of a nice little break. and then. You know, you get to try to finish on 14 through 18, dead back into the wind, and uh, it, it is it is every bit of long and hard and uh, fantastic. Well, PGA coaching is all about mentorship, and you've got a great mentor that you're working under right now at Silvermine, Stewart. Why did you Why did you choose to work under Stewart? And Stewart, please speak to the the uh, greatness that Peter has, and how proud you are of him being here. Um, it, it, it's it was a uh, not a very hard decision, I would say. Um, you know, I kind of did my first three years at Old Oaks and Purchase, um, and I was kind of looking for something uh, a little different. And, you know, I thought it was a good opportunity for me to definitely kind of grow in a couple different aspects uh, in the work business that, you know, he's done so well uh, over his time at Silvermine. Stuart, what, tell me how proud you are. Tell us how proud you are. Oh, this is like, uh, I feel like he's a son. Um, I work for his dad. Um, for nine years and I was on work for his dad when he was born and Mike was about one year old and so uh, to see him grow up and mature uh, uh, just become a great citizen like he is um, and then to have the experience for me to be at Silvermine and to kind of see where his game has gone and playing that he can play at this level it's it's uh, it's really impressive and it's uh, um, 
I'm excited. Well, we saw Peter say in the piece there that golf is all in the family, in the Ballow family, your, your parents, Mike and Paige. Uh, unfortunately, not here, but they'll be watching from afar. Yeah. Uh, but Mike, on the bag, lots of years on the tour, played eight years out there. Now you're at Westchester Country Club, also in the Mets section. You guys battle each other a little bit. Uh, talk about how it's going to be to caddy for your brother here at the PGA Championship. Uh, what a great experience. No, I couldn't be happier for him. Uh, he's, he's earned the right to be here. Uh, I've kind of been waiting for him to kind of grow into the player he is now. You know, he kind of, you know, was an all-state hockey player, kind of a late bloomer in my opinion. And here we are now, he's 29 years old and he's putting his game up against the best players in the world. And, and, and I have a pretty good feeling that he's going to show you some good stuff this week. <laughs> I bet you're right. Peter, tell us how you're feeling mentally the day before this tournament. You know, how are the nerves and how do you expect to feel on that first tee tomorrow? Uh, I've been pretty good with it um, so far. Um, you know, I've kind of had, a, I have a good group of people here right now with me. Um, that you know, give me downtime, but also don't give me give myself too much downtime to start yeah. really kind of thinking about it. Um, you know, I'm always trying to move and trying to do something, uh, just to kind of keep my mind off of kind of the situation that I'm in. Um, you know, because I do know enough of where I am and what I'm about to do tomorrow. Um, but you know, being with the people that I have here, between my wife and couple, and a lot of my really great friends, um, it's just they they've been doing such a good job of keeping me you know, occupied and um, just moving where, yeah. you know, hopefully tomorrow I can continue to kind of do what I've done. I think I've hit the fair, uh, first ferry two out of three times. So we'll see if I can do it one more. Uh, if not, it's okay. <laughs> now, I've spent some time in the Met PGA section and got to know you guys a little bit up there as a, when I was a head professional up there. But, and I understand the difficulty of playing in that section. I mean, so they pride themselves on being yeah. great players and great teachers. Uh, I mean, talk about, I know you guys have to battle each other in the section <laughs> events. Uh, talk about the, the quality of play in the Met section. I know there's about five PGA professionals from the Met section here playing this week. Yeah, um, you know, I think, you know, it's kind of a perk being where we are and in the section we are that, you know, we have five guys that are still in the section and we've technically had one more, Ben Pollan, who did, you know, qualified to the PPC <laughs> through the Met, uh, but he's now out at Shooting Star. Um, you know, and to have kind of those guys and that you're battling in, you know, the New York State Open, the Met Open, Westchester Open, um, I think it's kind of a perk, you know. I mean, you kind of always have to play really good if you want to have any kind of a good finish. So I think it helps um, translating to here. I mean, obviously, these guys are in a different class than what we are, but, you know, it still has to be really good golf if you want to do anything good. Well, thank you three for joining us here on our set, and best of luck tomorrow for your 231 tea time with the best players in the world and uh, Stuart and Mike alongside them all the way. Yeah, good luck guys. We will certainly be watching. In the meantime, let's check in with Coach Michael Breed. I'm Michael Breed, 2012 PGA Teacher and Coach of the Year, and I want to talk to you about how you can make more putts by controlling the putter face. Now look, we've all been told, you know what, if I aim the putter to the left, it's going to go to the left. If I aim the putter to the right, it's going to go to the right. I'm not talking about controlling the aim of the putter head. What I'm talking about is controlling the loft of the putter head. So we start getting less loft. This is going down this way. If we start adding loft, it's going up into the air. Now, what does that do? Well, when I start adding loft to the, to the putt or de-lofting the putter, I start creating a different impact point on the ball, which really alters the speed and when you're changing speed you're you have unpredictable or un you don't have any control over the speed now all of a sudden what happens to you is you three putt a lot you miss short putts you miss breaking putts here's what you're going to do to get control over that loft you get an alignment stick and you put it in the cavity of the putter hold that with the trail hand and then what we want to do is we want to make sure that we we feel like there's a distance between the lead forearm and, and that alignment stick. Maybe it's an inch or two, but we want that to be maintained the whole way, just like that. Now, if I'm not maintaining the loft, if I'm altering it, now what you're gonna see is you're gonna see this alignment stick go back and forth like a windshield wiper. And when we start doing that, that's when we are really creating a huge discrepancy in the, the contact point and the distance that we're putting into, into the golf ball because we start altering that loft. Here's what you're going to do. Put this in here. Make a practice putting stroke. Now, you don't even have to look at the ball. Just make sure you're monitoring this distance between the forearm and the alignment stick. 
And then all of a sudden, you get a fairly consistent loft on it. And look at that ball. While it didn't go in, it had great speed. Do that drill for a little bit. And now what you're going to do when you get in here to really hit a putt is you're going to almost feel like you've got that alignment stick in there. And that's going to mean that the body is moving properly. You're not adding loft. You're not taking loft out. You're delivering a consistent loft and a predictable loft so that you can create a consistent and a predictable speed. Yes, that's how you do it. Make sure you pay attention to the aim of the putter, where it's going left and right, but also the loft on the putter. That is essential for being able to control speed. So you get rid of those three putts and you start making these putts that you feel like you should make. That's how you're going to become a better putter. The PGA Championship begins this Thursday with its flourish of thrills and emotions as past champions and challengers alike will compete for the prestigious Wanamaker Trophy. I was in a very good state of mind all week and then I felt once we got to the weekend, especially Sunday, you know, I felt like it was time to go get it. I love having the little plate in my locker saying the 2017 champion, but uh, I would like to have a lot more years on it. The 103rd edition of the event will take place on the notoriously demanding ocean course at Kiowa Island in South Carolina. I think that's something about this place. You know, no lead is safe. I mean, out here, it's especially those last couple holes, but really the entire golf course. I mean, you have trouble. You can lose a golf ball in any shot. You get some crosswinds. It's, you have to hit the ball very solid. You have to place it and hitting the fairways is a premium and uh, it's got some teeth. It's really just going to be about adapting and patience is going to be key this week. And I think the person that's able to do that and, and not get worked up, I think is going to have a good chance. And we welcome you back inside our PGA Coaching Live set right here on the Players Practice Range getting ready for the PGA Championship. And we are joined now by a very special guest, David Price, the longtime coach and mentor of Will Zalatoris. David, thanks so much for joining us today. I can't even imagine what these last couple of months have been like for you since, you know, from the Masters to now. Well, Melanie, it's uh, actually from last year when we just started after the COVID, it's been just an incredible nine months, 10 months now for uh, that, that Will's been on. So. Pretty exciting, really. Yeah, and you've been with him for a very long time. At what point did you know that Will had it in him to be this player? Well, uh, when he came to me when he was right at 11 years old. He joined our club, and we started working with him, uh, myself, and then one of my assistants also, Dean Larson, who was a very good player. And, and uh, we noticed right away uh, Will had, had some, some teaching out in California. And immediately we knew that his game was mature well beyond his years. So it, it was very quick. It didn't take long to see. Yeah, speaking of that maturity, I think when the world fell in love with Will during the Masters, it was so amazing how calm, cool, and collected he was. Has he always been like that? You know, he's been very confident. Uh, he's confident in his game, and he's, uh, he is very focused, number one. Um, secondly, when you think about it, uh, he's – he had been in that position 15 times this year, just since the pandemic. Uh, we started replaying after the pandemic. And, and uh, so he had been there a lot. He understood what it took at that point. And frankly, I think the golf course just set up extremely well yeah. for him. And he was very comfortable on it. Uh, just loved it. Technically well, speaking, David, though, what makes him and his ball striking so pro proficient? I mean, he's always at the top of the greens and regulation stat and the ball striking stat, something he's going to absolutely need out here at the 7,800 yard plus ocean course. So speak to his his proficiency with his ball striking. Well, Steve, number one, uh, he was he, he was a very good athlete, is a very good athlete. I mean, when he was younger, he was the point guard on the basketball team. He was the shortstop and the pitcher on the baseball team. And, and uh, He's got tremendous hand and eye coordination. I don't have to tell you that. I, I used to do a drill with him when he was 12 years old that I, I would let him start taking the club back and I would explain, I would tell him what kind of shot I wanted him to hit. Not beforehand, this is while the club's going back and he could perform it at 12 years old. I mean, he just had hand and eye coordination and just understood at a young age, you know, the, the importance of the plane and the club face position to hit a shot that you wanted to. So just amazing athlete. He attended Wake Forest University, and I'm sure you helped guide him and connect him with Coach Jerry Haas there. I'm sure there was a ton of schools looking at him. Why do you think he chose Wake Forest? Well, uh, 
uh, one of the members at our club was Lanny Watkins. And Lanny had watched Will since he was in the ninth grade. Lanny's younger son, Tucker, was on the same high school golf team. So Lanny was very, Lanny had his hand in his pocket early on, I'll tell you that. And then when they offered him the Arnold Palmer scholarship, it was done at that <laughs> point. Well, David, let's take a listen to what Will Zalatoris had to say about you in his press conference earlier oh, this boy. week. <laughs> Kind of the PGA Championship has always been one that I think is, at least for me, has actually meant a lot in terms of David Price was on, who's my longtime mentor, and I've worked with him basically since I was 11 years old. He has walked with the last group uh, a lot of the years, uh, so hearing stories of guys playing, I um, almost kind of felt like I knew more about this tournament than I did of the other three majors just because of uh, Mr. Price. So uh, a little bit of a... Uh, you know, kind of appreciation for him. I mean, obviously, it, um, the guy means a lot to me, but obviously kind of hearing the stories through the years of all the guys and, you know, Rory winning here and um, all the other tournaments that at least he's told me about, um, you know, I remember a lot of really cool stories. Well, David, we know you don't have an earpiece in, so only Steve and I can hear that, but he had some amazing words to say about you. It's very clear that the two of you have such a close relationship. How would you just describe the personal relationship between you and Will? Well, we've, we've, uh, we kind of grew in this thing together. I don't think anybody does something right when you start and, 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 don't, and, and don't grow with it. Sure. And, and, um, we just got close and, and, and remain that way throughout uh, the, the whole process. Uh, he's moved on at this point to some other gentlemen that are, that are helping. He's got a whole team, but we stay close. We stay in contact and I try and keep him grounded yeah. a little bit because, he, you know, this is all new to him. It's all sure. new to all of us. So we try to keep him grounded. And, and uh, you know, if you ever notice, he's very gracious with all the people sure that, that have worked with him. So he's, he's just a fine young man and really does a, a lot of nice things. Did you get the engagement FaceTime? You know, I did not. <laughs> I, I, I was I was actually doing rules at another tournament, and I could not go. So uh. I, I, I was invited to the, the little dinner they had, but I could not go, unfortunately. But um, I, I, I certainly know Caitlin and, yeah, and know the, their their relationship there, and so it, it's it's all all good. Well, we can't thank you ha having uh, joined us here on our set and uh, you know, the mentorship that you provide. I mean, that's what, what PGA coaches are all about. And uh, we just can't thank you enough for your spending time with us and developing such a guy that we're going to see for a lot more years to come. Well, yeah, we sure hope so. And, and certainly thank you for having me. I uh, enjoyed being here and uh, look forward to the week. What, what do you think his chances are? Real quick, before we go, what do you think well, his chances the, are the this week? The fact of the matter is, I, I think they're pretty good. Um, you know, winning that first one is pretty difficult for sure. But uh, I watched him at the Byron Nelson last week, and his ball striking, as you alluded to, was just absolutely incredible. He hit it inside 16 feet 13 times. Uh, and just it was just beautiful ball striking, and, and that's what it's going to take here. Well, David, we really appreciate you joining us here on set on PGA Coaching Live. And, uh, yeah, just enjoy the event, and yeah, we'll cross our fingers for Will. Okay, thank David you very Price, much. David Price, thanks so much for thank coming you. on. Let's send it out to the 18th hole with Joanna. We're in the 18th fairway here on the ocean course. I'm literally standing on top of Bryson DeChambeau's divot from the back tee, 505 into the wind. He probably hit it about 280 yards. He still had 217 into the middle of this green, just an absolutely brutally long hole uh, today with this wind. So most of the players will be about 25 to 30 yards back. You can see here the landing zone. It's a a bit wider right before the fairway bunkers but as you can see that bailout's going to be down the left near the grandstands avoiding all the trouble on the right side so speaking of the trouble on the right side good old pete die has these pop bunkers three in a row that are essentially going to be one shot penalties extremely deep that lip is high then you have that fairway bunker a little bit more to the right, not as penalizing, but right next to that really thick fescue rough where you're lucky to find your ball or even to hack it out. Again, a, a one stroke penalty. So if you hit two solid shots here in the 18th hole, that lunch or dinner is going to taste a lot better.
20 seconds of activation can help your first tee shot because it wakes everything up. I'm actually get a crack in my sternum, which actually feels really good. Freaks JJ out a little bit. <laughs> I think you've got the best tempo out there. Setting the tone of smooth tempo starts with your wedges. We can just take our laser out, right, and see how far these balls are flying to see if that is matching your feel. How'd that feel? Pretty good. Right on 60. 60 it is. So we know the importance of being square here. Sometimes, Colin, you open up here, which leads to the club going out. So let's make sure that the shoulder stays square. Specifically for Kiowa, it's about flighting irons. It's about being able to control that. Club face and path and everything have to be right. But especially if I can't feel my body doing it, then I know I'm going to have a problem. It's like gut feeling. I'm going to surprise you here. At the top of the swing, I'm going to tell you hit draw or fade. Draw. There's a lot of great ball strikers that swing up. You look at Rory, he swings a lot up. Yes. And then you've got like Sergio, who swings almost down. Your swing is very, what we would call, centered and leveled. Just because you have a driver in hand, just because it's teed up, does not mean you have to swing <laughs> six up on it. If you need to go higher, get more loft on driver. Yeah. You know, it's as simple as that. I'm 60 years old, and my lifetime in golf has taught me you have to learn how to relax to play well. I got that down pat. In the final round of this year's championship, I came to the last hole needing uh, unbelievable up and down in order to get into a playoff. And I stood there and took a few deep breaths and said it's not the most important thing in the world, but I can hit this shot. It might not come off right now, but I can hit this shot. And I hit it and it came off. And it was uh, a very special feeling and uh, a little bit of luck but a little bit of skill as well. Hall of Famer gets it done. What an imagination and what execution when you need it most. At 60, the, the guard has totally changed. I am the shortest, the oldest, and close to the fattest one here. I give every shot all I got, and uh, sometimes I have more good ones than bad ones. I'm Sonny Skinner. And I'm a member of the PGA team of 20. Hey, Colin, you've been long off the tee, but don't forget that last 100 yards is just as important as the 300 before it. It all comes down to refined approach. Sixty-four yards out here on the 16th hole at the Ocean Course. It's all about refining your approach. Sixty-four yards, roughly, is about waist high. I'll feel that a little more. Approach shots is kind of what got me out here to the PGA Tour. It's kind of been my bread and butter. I think a good reason is because I, I know what shots I hit, but I also know my misses. You know, if you cut it 20 yards or you hook it 20 yards right to left, you know, embrace that. Play that shot. Detail is everything. The detail of my life. Everything is precise for a reason. Our golf games are very specific to who we are, and that's what the Escalade is. It's very specific to itself, not just on the outside, but its interior, its features, everything about it. That's a beast of a car right there. And we're back right here on PGA Coaching Live, presented by Cadillac. We've got one of our great PGA coaches that we've seen a lot, but we can't get enough of this guy. Joe Hallett, welcome back to the set. Steve, good to be back here. It's, uh, I've been out on the range, I've been out on the golf course, and it's kind of nice to be back here at uh, Ground Central. <laughs> well, in a wind like this, we've talked about the wind, but the wind is not going away, especially this time of the day. For these players to have success this week at the 103rd PGA Championship, 
solid contact is going to be very important. I know you've got a little tip to guide us in that path. Well, the one thing that you see out on the range and the one thing that you see with all these great players is they really swing through the shot. What we see with amateurs so much is they actually swing to the shot. So it's a very, very simple drill. It's kind of called half hole. So all I want you to do is when you get out to the range, this is a good way to warm up also. I want you to take kind of a half a backswing and a complete follow through. Now the temptation is gonna to be to take the club back and do that. That's not what we're looking for. We wanna take the club halfway back and all the way through. Stretches you a little bit, gets you loose for the day. Again, halfway back, all the way through. It really looks like it forces you to accelerate. The exactly. We really want to get the club going through the shot because even if you're a little off, as long as this club is moving, you got a better chance of putting a little more energy on it. Steve, as you get a little looser with this and finally you hit one good, the secret now is just add to your backswing as you keep going through. Start with halfway back and all the way through, and before you know it, you'll be all the way back and all the way through. Let's see one more. Come on. I, all I, right. I, love, I love watching your golf swing, number one. And number two, I want to see you flight it through the wind here. <laughs> if we wait, that could come back right about here right now into that wind. <laughs> it is amazing wind there is out here, but you, you hit it right on the head. Make sure you accelerate and you get these, these golf shots going where you want. Ball striking is going to be so important this week, and uh, these guys are going to have everything they can handle here at the PGA Championship. Thanks for joining us, Joe. We'll see you real soon, I know. Thank you. Play the Nine Shot Challenge presented by the 2021 PGA Championship now through Sunday for a chance to win some incredible prizes, including a trip to next year's PGA Championship. Visit topgolf.com slash nine shot challenge for more information. Let's catch up with Steven Yugner right now, the golf professional here at Key Island. Hi, I'm Steven Younger, PGA Head Golf Professional here at the Ocean Course. And we're here at the 16th hole today in one of the very deepest bunkers or sandy areas that we have on the golf course. And there's a lot of unique features about the Ocean Course. It's all just part of the native environment that we have here. So it presents some challenges where sometimes you don't always have the greatest lie. The sand itself is not something you're used to. It's more of a sugar sand or a beach sand. So when we hit bunker shots here, because we do have that uh, ability to take a practice swing and kind of test the sand, that's what we recommend everyone to do. So I'm gonna do that here with this shot. Obviously this is a very challenging shot. We're very deep here. I'm gonna take a quick practice swing and get sort of a feel for how uh, hard or firm or soft the sand is. I'm gonna step into the shot. And because this is such a deep shot, I'm gonna to try to open the face up as much as I can and swing through the shot. And I'm out, so that's the most important thing. I hope this coaching tip helps you next time you face a unique bunker shot like the ones here at Kiowa. And we welcome you back to our PGA Coaching Live set presented by Cadillac. Still here on the players' practice range, but starting to clear out a little bit, Steve. It is. I think everybody's just kind of winding down a little bit, trying to just gather that last bit of energy and that last bit of mental focus. I know a lot of players that we've had either on set or that we've spoken to out of the range have said, nine holes today, that's yeah. all I got. Yeah, and it seems like, you know, they would, you would think they'd want to get out here and, and hit more in the wind. It's gusty right now, and we know it's going to happen tomorrow afternoon, too. Well, it's just about conserving energy, conserving mental power at this point. Go see your physio trainer. Make sure all your body parts are going in the right motion. Maybe you slept funny on a <laughs> on a wrong bed or a bad pillow or something. But uh, you know, these players are just getting the last bits of, of work done before they're ready to go. Whoever you know, some of the players like a Peter Bala who are playing 
late, uh, you know, at 2.30 tomorrow. They've yeah. got a little more time. They can maybe have a nice di dinner. They can sleep in tomorrow. Uh, the players like Larkin Gross, who we had on here from our team at 20, they've got a 7-11 tea oh. time. <laughs> so they're going to have to fill in. Uh, early to bed. They're going to have to fill in pretty early to bed tonight. Yeah, and with these winds, right now it feels like about 15 miles per hour, I think <laughs> is what the forecast said. Gusty, what is it going to look like on the course tomorrow for these guys? If this wind is at this, you know, speed right now, going out and coming back what are they going to face the velocity of this wind and it's just uh is, is something to behold i mean we've seen all these shots and the ball is just not going anywhere into the wind the first four holes are going to play dramatically into this easterly wind fifth hole goes a little south and then six through 13 head out to the west and that's going to be mainly downwind and so those holes and, and i gotta say downwind holes are not necessarily easier than the end wind holes because you can't the ball doesn't want to stop all right, well, let's catch up with our girl, Joanna Coe, on the 18th. I am in front. We're standing right in front of the 18th green here at the Ocean Course, 505 yard par four. Tough, tough final hole. Here's where the magic happens. Uh, it's, this green is deep. It's probably 40 yards long. A front miss, uh, a miss that's just short of the green, not so bad for a front pin location. Even for a back pin location, players will have a lot of green to work with. For a back pin location, anything down this right side, we have these tough runoffs, huge little uh, hills. Um, anything, uh, you know, down that right is going to be either a flop shot or a bump and run into the hill. Tough to gauge that speed and distance. Down the left side, a couple of those tough bunkers, extremely deep. Plus, if you're hitting a bunker shot with the wind, it's, it's going to have trouble stopping. So I think players are going to be really happy stepping away with a four on this one. Well, we can't thank everyone enough for hanging with us for this last hour, and we still have plenty more to come.